For question one, I will multiply 280 by the probability of getting a blue, and this will give me 112. For question two, I will divide 880 by prime numbers. So 880 divided by two is 440, divided by two is 220, divided by two again, 110, divided by two, I get a 55, then I'm gonna divide by five, get 11, and finally divide by 11 to get one. So my answer is two to the power of four times five times 11. For question three, part A, 2.46 times 10 to the six is equal to two, four, six, and four zeros. In part B, 0 0.00074 is 7.4 times 10 to the minus four. And in part C, I will change the second number to make the power six. So 5.6 times 10 to the six plus 0 0.23 times 10 to the six. So my answer now will be times 10 to the six. And I'm gonna add the two numbers here. I get 5.83. Note the question doesn't say give your answer in standard form. So an ordinary number 583 with four zeros is also acceptable. In question four, I have five numbers with these characteristics. Now, since the median is eight and I have an odd number of terms, it means that the middle number must be an eight. Now, the mode is five and five is less than eight. So these two must be fives. I can't just have one five, otherwise the mode would not be five. I need two fives, then the range is 10. So going from the smallest to the largest, this difference must be 10. So the largest number is 15. And I'm missing now the fourth number. If I call this X, then five plus five plus eight plus X plus 15 is equal to the sum, which is 45. So X comes out to be 12. In question five, I've got this number to one decimal place. Now the value of the first decimal place is 0 0.1. If I divide this by two, I get 0 0.05. So I'm gonna add this to the number for the upper bound and subtract it for the lower bound. So 33.75 is the lower bound. 33.85 is the upper bound. In question six, I will round each number to one significant figure to make my life easier. So I have 70 times 40 divided by 0.02. Now this gives me 2800 over 0.02. Now I can Multiply top and bottom by 100, so I get rid of the decimal in the denominator. So I've got 28 with four zeros over two, which comes out to be 140,000. Now note that his answer, which is 139,201.9048, is approximately 140,000, which means that his answer is sensible. I'll start question seven by calculating the length of AC and I'll do this using Pythagoras theorem plus 6.4 squared. So AC comes out to be 7.71 meters. So the perimeter of this shape is equal 4.3 plus 6.4 
plus 7.71, which is 18.4, which means he will have to buy 19 meters. Now, the cost of each meter is 22, so 19 times 22 will give me 418, and that's the final answer. For question 8, recall that the mean is given by sigma x over n. Now, if I rearrange this one, n times the mean will give me the sum. And I'll summarize all the information I have on a table. Now, in box A, I have 15 strawberries with a mean of 24. And in box B, I have 25 with a mean of 18. Now, the sum of the strawberries in box A is 15 times 24, which is 360. Similarly, for box B, 25 times 18 is equal to 450. So the total of all the strawberries is 360 plus 450, which is 810. I've got 15 plus 25, 40 strawberries. So to find the mean of all the strawberries, that's 210 divided by 40. And this comes out to be 20.25 grams. For part A of question 9, my two brackets will be x minus 7, x plus 6. And for question 2, I have 3x plus 15 less than 8x plus 3. I'll take all the x's on the right, so I have 5x on the right. And on the left, I've got 15 minus 3, which is 12. So 12 over 5 is less than x. You can write this one as x is more than 12 over 5. For question 10, recall that anything to the power of 0 is equal to 1, so x is equal to 0. Then for part b, the powers when subtracted, and that's because I have a division sign here, will give me n, so minus 8 minus minus 6 is equal to n, n comes out to be minus 2. In question 11, I'll start by drawing the corresponding equations. So x equals to 4 is a vertical line passing through 4, 0. The second one, y equals to minus 2, is a horizontal line passing through 0, minus 2, which is this one. So the line looks like this. And finally, the line y is equal to x passes through the points 0, 0, 1, 1, 2, 2, and so on. So if you join these points, go to the negative side as well, you'll get this line. Finally, let's have a look at the inequalities. x is less than or equal to 4, means I need the region to the left of this line. y bigger than or equal to minus 2 means I need the region above this line and finally y less than or equal to x means I need the region below the line y is equal to x so if I put all of this together the region I need is this triangle so let's shade this one and let's put a label. In question 12 to find the gradient I'll need to rearrange and get y on its own. So 2y is equal to minus 5x plus 7. So y is equal to minus 5 over 2x plus 7 over 2. So the gradient is minus 5 over 2. In question 13, consider one of those right angle triangles. In order to find the hypotenuse, I'll use the cos, 
So cos 35 is equal to adjacent, which is 15, over hypotenuse, which is A and B. This means that A and B is equal to 15 over cos 35, which comes out to be 18.3 and so on. Now, the distance from A all the way to F is 80. I've got four equal lengths of 18.3. So to find EF, I will just subtract 80 minus four times 18.3 and so on. My answer comes out to be 6.75 to three significant figures. I'll start question 14 by putting these 11 numbers in ascending order. Then to find the interquartile range, I'll need the lower and upper quartiles. For Q1, that's the lower quartile, I've got a quarter of 11, which is 2.75, which means I'm going to take the third value. This is equal to 38. And then for Q3, I'll take three quarters of 11 is equal to 8.25. So I'm going to take the ninth one, which is 45. And then finally, interquartile range is equal to Q3 minus Q1. That's 45 minus 38, which will give me seven. For part B, I need to compare the interquartile range to see which one is more consistent. And January has a lower interquartile range, seven against 12, which means January is more consistent. For question 15, first recall that density is equal to mass over volume. I'll start by calculating the volume of one cylinder. So volume equals pi times the radius square times the length. This gives me 375 over four pi as a decimal. This is 294.5 and so on. I vary arrange this formula I will get mass is equal to density times volume. So the mass is equal to 21.5, which is the density, times the volume, and then times five, because I have five cylinders. This gives me 31,661 grams. If I convert this into kilograms, I will get 31.661 and note this is bigger than 30 kilograms which is the greatest mass that Jax can carry. So the answer to the question would be no, he cannot carry them at the same time. In part A of question 16, I am asked to find this angle here. And this is 40 degrees because these two angles are angles in the same segment and angles in the same segment are equal. In part B, I am asked to find angle EDC, which is this one. Now this angle with the angle CAE are opposite angles in a cyclic quadrilateral and these angles add up to 180 degrees. So 180 minus 40 will give me 140 degrees. In question 17, I'll start by cross multiplying. So y n squared is equal to n squared plus d. Then I will collect the terms with n on the same side. So y n squared minus n squared is equal to d. I'll take n squared out as a common factor. And then I'll divide by the brackets. So n squared is equal to d over y minus one. And finally, I will take the square root of this fraction. 
and that's my final answer. For part of question 18, the missing y values are 3, 4.5, 1.5, and 10.5. Then I will proceed to plot these points. And then I will join these points using a smooth curve. For part C, I will start with this equation. Now, I need to make the left-hand side the same as the plotted graph. So, I will subtract another x value, but I have to do this on both sides. And I also have to subtract 1. So, if I add this, then my left-hand side will become 1 over 2x cubed minus 2x plus 3 is equal to minus x minus 1. The left-hand side now is the graph that I have, and the right-hand side is the extra line that I have to draw. So y equals minus x minus 1 must be drawn. I will make a small table of x and y values. Now, for x values, I will use minus 3, 0, 3, but you can use any x values you want. If I put these x values into this equation, I will get 2, minus 1, minus 4. So, let's go to the graph and plot these points. And if I join them using a ruler, I will get this straight line. Now, if I zoom in at the point of intersection, I can read this as minus 2.35, and this is an estimate of my solution. Note that the mark scheme accepts any answer between minus 2.3 and minus 2.4. For question 19, recall the formula for the area of a sector. That's theta over 360 times pi r squared. So we know the area is 100. That's equal to theta over 360 times pi 12 squared. So theta is equal to 100 times 360 over pi 12 squared. If I rearrange this one, I'll get theta equals 250 over pi, which is 79.57 and so on. So the angle ABC is equal to theta over 2 because angle at the center is twice the angle of the circumference, and this will give me 39.8 degrees. In question 20, t is inversely proportional to m squared, so t equals k over m squared. If I substitute the given values, 30 is equal to k over 0.5 squared, so k comes out to be 7.5, so the formula is t equals to 7.5 over m squared. And then in part b, I need to find the value of t when m is 0.1, so just substitute, put this in the calculator, 750 is my final answer. In question 21, I'm given this histogram. Note on the vertical axis, there is no scale. Also note that I'm given the frequency for the first group, first 10 minutes. So I will start by creating a frequency table. 
Let's write down the groups. You can see this from the histogram. The class widths are the difference between the upper bound and the lower bounds. So of course, 10 minus 0 is 10, 25 minus 10 is 15, 30 minus 25 is 5, 40 minus 30 is 10, and 60 minus 40 is 20. And as mentioned before, I'm given the frequency of the first class. Now recall that frequency density is equal to frequency divided by class width. So for the first group, 14 divided by 10 is 1.4. So if I go to the histogram, I can label this point as 1.4. So now I can use this point to figure out the scale on the vertical axis and complete it. So now I can go back to my table and complete the frequency density column. For the second group, the frequency density is 3.2. For the next one is 3.6, 0 0.6 for the fourth one, and finally 0 0.2. Then I can rearrange this formula so frequency equals frequency density times class width and hence find the missing frequencies. I've got 48, 18, 6 and 4 and if I add this column I will get 90 which is my final answer. For question 22, I'll need to solve simultaneously the two equations. First, I'm going to rearrange the linear one to get y on its own. And then I will substitute this into the nonlinear one. So x squared minus x plus x plus 4 squared is equal to 10. Now let's expand x squared minus x plus x squared plus 8x plus 16 is equal to 10. I'll take everything to the left. So 2x squared plus 7x plus 6 is equal to 0. Now I can use either factorization, complete the square, or the quadratic formula to solve this. I'll proceed with factorization. 2x plus 3 is 1 bracket x plus 2 is the other bracket. This will give me two solutions. x is minus 3 over 2 or x is minus 2. I will put these two solutions into the linear equation and get the y values. y equals 5 over 2 from the first one or y is equal to 2 from the second one. So the points of intersection are minus 3 over 2 and 5 over 2 or minus 2, 2 and then to find the length AB I will use the distance formula which says the following distance equals the square root of x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared this is basically Pythagoras theorem so if, if I put the values in I will get minus 2 minus minus 3 over 2, that's plus 3 over 2 squared plus 2 minus 5 over 2 squared and you need to take the square root of this so if you put this on the calculator you will get square root of 2 over 2 and this is the final answer. In question 23, I will need the following two results. For perpendicular lines, the product of the gradients is equal to minus 1. And to find the midpoint between two points, you take the mean of the x-coordinates and the mean of the y-coordinates. So, let's start by finding the gradient of the line PQ. That's minus 4, minus 6 over 5 plus 1 
which gives me minus 5 over 3. So the gradient of the perpendicular is equal to positive 3 over 5. Then I'll need to calculate the midpoint. This is equal to minus 1 plus 5 over 2 and 6 minus 4 over 2, which gives me 2, 1. So now I need to find the line passing through point 2, 1 with gradient 3 over 5. So y equals mx plus c. Substituting will give me 1 equals 3 over 5 times 2 plus c. C comes out to be minus 1 over 5. So the equation of the straight line is y equals 3 fifths over x minus 1 over 5. I will multiply by 5. So I get 5y is equal to 3x minus 1. And then I'll put everything on one side. So 0 equals 3x minus 5y minus one and this is my final answer. In question 24, I'll start by writing the quadratic in descending powers of x. So I've got minus 3x squared plus 12x plus 7. And then I'll take a factor of minus 3. So I've got x squared minus 4x and then the plus 7. Now let's focus on this expression here and let's complete the square for this one. So x squared minus 4x equals 2x minus 2 squared. That's half of minus 4. And then minus this 2 squared. You can simplify this to x minus 2 squared minus 4. So if I go back, I'm going to have minus 3 and then x minus 2 squared minus 4 plus 7. Now I'm going to expand the square brackets only. So I get minus 3x minus 2 squared, and then minus 3 times minus 4 will give me plus 12, and then the plus 7. So minus 3x minus 2 squared plus 19 is my final answer. I can write this as 19 minus 3x minus 2 squared. Now in part B, I need to find the coordinates of the turning point. The x coordinate is the value of x that makes this bracket 0, and this is 2. Once this bracket becomes 0, it will disappear. So 19 minus 0 is 19, and that is my y coordinate. In question 25, I am given that OA to AN is 1 to 4, and also OA is 2A. So if OA is 2A, then AN is 4 times that, which means this is 8A. Also, OM to MB is 1 to 1, which means M is the midpoint of OB. And since OB is equal to 2B, then OM is equal to B and MB is also equal to B. Now, I'm going to let AP, which is this one, be a fraction of AB. And this fraction, I'm going to call it lambda. And similarly, I'm going to let NP be a fraction of N. M, I'm going to call this nu. Now, my target is to find lambda and nu, and to do this, I'll find two roots between a starting and a finishing point, and I'm going to equate the roots. I've chosen to go from A to P through two different roots. One root will be the direct one, A to P, and the other one will be from A to N, and then N to p so i'll start by finding a and b to go from a to b you can go from a to o and then from o to b hence a b is equal to minus 2a 
plus 2b. And I need this one because a p is lambda times a and b. So I've got lambda minus 2a plus 2b. And if I expand, minus 2 lambda a plus 2 lambda b. For the alternative roots, I will first need to find n m. And this is equal to minus 10a plus b because to go from n to m, I'm going to go through o. So that's minus 10a plus b. And then to go from a to p, I will go from a to n plus n p. Now a n is equal to 8a plus new times n m. So this is 8a plus new times minus 10a plus b. If I expand, I will get 8a minus 10 new a plus new b. And if I collect the coefficients of a and the coefficients of b separately, I will get 8 minus 10 new a plus new b. Now, because these two vectors go from a to p, the coefficients of a in the first one must be equal to the coefficients of a in the second one, and also the coefficient of b in the first one must be equal to the coefficient of b in the second one. So I can write down the following two equations for the a terms. I've got minus 2 lambda equals to 8 minus 10 nu. And for the beta ones, I've got 2 lambda equals 2 nu. And then if I use substitution, I'm going to substitute 2 lambda where mu is, I will get the following minus 2 lambda equals 8 minus 10 2 lambda. So minus 2 lambda equals to 8 minus 20 lambda. So 18 lambda equals to 8. So lambda comes out to be 8 over 18, which is 4 over 9. Hence, AP to p and b is equal to 4 over 9 to the rest, which is 5 over 9. You can simplify this to 4 to 5, and this is my final answer. In question 26, I have two intersecting chords. I need to find the length of a, b. So I will label this as x. Now note the point of intersection of the chord is C and the chords cut the circle at A and B for the first one, D, E for the second one. So my formula will be CA times CB. And this is equal to C and D times CE. So let's substitute the values in CA times 2 plus square root of 5 equals to 2 square root of 5 times 2 square root of 5 plus 4 plus square root of 5. Let's simplify these brackets. So CA times 2 plus square root of 5 is equal to 2 square root of 5 times 3 square root of 5 plus 4. Now I will proceed by expanding this bracket. I'm going to keep the left hand side the same. So when you expand these two terms, you get 30 plus the product of these two, which is 8 square root of 5. And then CA is equal to 30 plus 8 square root of 5 over 2 plus square root of 5. Now, 
This one is not in the required form, so I will need to rationalize the denominator. I know the calculator can do this automatically, but the question says show your working clearly. So let's copy this on the next page. So CA equals 30 plus 8 square root of 5 over 2 plus square root of 5. And I will multiply it by another fraction where the top and bottom are the same. This fraction will be very similar to this one, but instead of plus, I will get a minus, so 2 minus square root of 5. And the reason is that when I multiply out the denominator, I will get the difference of 2 squares, so 2 times 2 is equal to 4. And then I will get two terms that will cancel out. These are minus 2 root 5 plus 2 root 5, so this cancel out. So I'm left with root 5 time, times minus root 5, and this will give me minus 5. And then in the numerator, I will get 60 minus 30 square root of 5 plus 16 square root of 5 minus, and this product will give me 8 times 5, which is 40. And now if I simplify, I will get 20 minus 14 square root of 5 over minus 1. And this gives me minus 20 plus 14 square root of 5. Now, AB is equal to AC minus BC. So AC is the answer we found above, minus BC, which is 2 plus square root of 5. And if I expand and simplify, we'll get minus 22 plus 13 square root of 5. So my final answer will be 13 square root of 5 minus 22. So P is equal to 13 and Q is equal to minus 22.